Hi, this is David Harper, Bonic Turtle, with a quick introduction to operational risk under Basel II. This is especially for my FRM candidate customers. And to keep this in perspective, recall that Basel has three pillars, and it's the first pillar that contains the quantitative rules that determine the minimum capital requirements for the bank. And that first pillar has rules for each of the three major risk buckets including the original Basel Accord, that's 1988, contained rules for only credit risk. Then the amendment in 1996 added market risk, and those rules still apply. Finally, the Basel II framework, this is the modern Basel, added operational risk and dramatically revised the credit risk such that the Basel II, the modern framework, has rules for all three buckets. So within operational risk, just this piece here, there is, just like in credit risk, not a single approach, but an evolution from a basic approach, which is quite crude, to a set of advanced approaches that I won't cover here because it's quite flexible, and this is really a set of different methodologies within the advanced approach. But almost any bank can qualify to use the basic indicator approach, and then by meeting some additional criteria, including some documentation of the mapping of the different business lines, they can earn into the use of the standardized approach. So I'd like to show you both of these approaches now in a spreadsheet because they are more similar than different. So this spreadsheet illustrates both the basic indicator approach and the standardized approach. Also, I have eight business lines here, one per row, and that's because the Basel framework formally defines eight business lines. However, the key difference between the two approaches is the basic indicator approach does not use the business lines. The standardized approach does use the business lines. Otherwise, they are essentially similar in the respect that operational risk is estimated as a percentage of gross operating income. And so that's why it's both simple and easy to criticize because this is a fairly crude metric for measuring operational risk. But if we take a look at basic indicator approach, and we'll just assume we have a very diversified financial services firm that has businesses in each of the eight business lines. And then what I have here are gross operating income over the last three years. So it's annual gross operating income, year minus three, year minus two, year minus one for each of the eight business lines. Now in the basic indicator approach, I don't really need to break it out into business lines. So we have a summation at the bottom. In other words, three years ago, the bank's annual gross operating income was 160 million. And then, let me copy these down. It grew to 240 million two years ago. And finally, last year, the bank's annual gross operating income was 320 million. The basic indicator approach is very straightforward. It takes the average of the three years. See how I've got the average here of these three, 160, 243, 20. The average annual gross operating income over the last three years was 240 million. Then the bank simply multiplies by the alpha factor, which is currently, that's set by Basel, currently set at 15%. That's informed by a study they did of banks where their economic capital against operational risk was about 15%. And so you can see, that's all this is. It's the average annual gross operating income over the last three years multiplied by 15% gets us the charge for operational risk. The only nuance here is that, just to be illustrate, if we had a, some negatives here such that two years ago, the gross operating income was negative 20, it would be excluded from the calculation. So it's an average of three years excluding the zeros. And I'll put that back. And then quickly, just to look at the standardized approach, essentially similar. The only difference is now instead of a single alpha factor against the bank's total overall gross operating income, we now have a beta charge or beta factor against each of the eight business lines on the theory that some business lines are riskier in terms of operational risk than others. So, for example, corporate finance has a beta factor of 18%. Presumably, it contains more operational risk than, for example, retail banking, which only has a beta factor of 12%. So we have eight different factors. Three of them are 18% on the presumption that those are the riskier business lines. We have a couple of 15%, and then 
three of them are beta factor of 12%. But otherwise, under the standardized approach, we're really doing a weighted average of these beta factors still against the bank's gross operating income. Now, instead of the bank's overall gross operating income, it's, can, it's against the business line's operating incomes. So, for example, if we take corporate finance and we go back year minus three or three years ago, here it's simply a multiplication of the 20 million in gross in annual gross operating income for just that business line, corporate finance, multiplied by the 18%. So we're doing the multiplication up here. That way we have a uh, factor for each year for the business line and then down for trading and sales, retail, banking, etc. At the bottom then we sum, we sum the uh, charges for each year. So 24 million here is the combined charge that's been weighted by all the betas for year minus three, year minus two, year minus one. And that means that the average capital charge is simply the average of those numbers. In this case, see how it's a straightforward average. So we're averaging, and in this case, the bank would also have a capital charge of 36 million against operational risk. So I happen to end up the same place here, but it really depends on the business mix. If more of the operating income was generated in the riskier business lines like corporate finance or trading or sales, then the charge would be higher. The other nuance is there's a slightly different treatment for the negative. So if I go back to illustrating an example where there was negative in year minus two, then this cell right here actually, instead of excluding it, converts it to a zero. So it becomes an average that includes zero for that year. And in this case, the capital charge would be 24 million. So that's a summary of the standardized approach, which is a weighted average of the beta factors applied to the business lines, but still of annual gross operating income and the basic indicator approach, approach which is a straight alpha or 15% of the bank's average annual gross operating income, excluding zeros over the last three years. This is David Harper, The Bionic Turtle. Thanks for your time.